What's up, everybody? Welcome to You Comment, We Respond. We're going to do three hands this time. And probably for the next few weeks. Yeah, getting real intense with the You Comment, We Respond. We're going to start with Greatest Hero Call Ever featuring Maxim Likov and Vitaly Tolokonikov. If you haven't seen that hand or want to see it again, you know what to do. Click right up there, then come right on back here for the comments. All right. Yeah. So first of all, DRF asks, yeah. no mention of bet sizing tells. Tolokonikov bet roughly one third on the flop and the turn. The small turn bet is especially telling because if he had a set of fours or better, then the hand he is hoping to get called by is an ace and he'd presumably bet bigger. I also found it's very common for players to bet small when they intend to barrel because it makes three barreling cheaper, whereas when betting for value, they tend to bet an amount which will generate a pot large enough for an all in river bet to be pot size river bet to commit the opposing player. So the story doesn't make sense. Not to mention the smaller bet given better odds gives better odds on the call. Woo. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. But I think the issue I have with this comment is that that's a very easy strategy to exploit. If yeah. people are actually going to bet bigger when they have it and bet smaller when they don't, well, then it's going to be pretty easy to know what they have. Yeah. That's a problem. That's a big problem. Yeah. Also, it's become very chic these days to make very small bets until the river. Yeah. So betting a third of the pot on the turn isn't necessarily telling in the way you're implying that it is. Maybe back then it was. It was a while right. ago. But I would say these days, the elite players, like, you know, Sam, I was going to say Sam Farhab. But that's, <laughs> that's, that's not going to go. Sam Trickett, perhaps? Yeah. Uh, Sam Trickett can bet a third on the turn and have quads or can yeah. have nothing or can have a middle pair. I mean, I mean balance, is, balance is key against elite players. And Maxim Likov at the time wasn't an elite player. Maybe Tolokonikov was having this tell. Maybe, maybe, maybe. this comment is correct. Yeah. But it still would be an exploitable bad strategy to do that. More what I think was happening is Tolokonikov expected Likov to have a lot more hands on the turn. And once Likov called the turn, Tolokonikov thought, okay, Likov usually has an ace or better. So I need to bet a bit bigger to get those to fold. Also, just a poker uh, semantic thing. It's actually not a set of fours. It's either quad fours or trip fours. Okay. Because there's two fours on the board. That was, yeah, cool. You know, I want everyone to be talking about the <laughs> yeah, same thing okay, here. Fair All right. enough. Also, Bob Giorgio says. All right. What? No discussion at, about all the second pairs that KV, oh, that's... Um, Tolokonikov? I guess. Could have. It must be, right? Yeah, it has to be. Okay. No, Tol Likov. Likov? Likov. No, it's got to be Tolokonikov. It says KV. KV. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to figure it out with the rest of yeah. the comment. Um, I agree he could have... Yeah, it's Tolokonikov. I agree he could have the world of bluffs, but all the pairs, kings through packet fives, fall into the category of bettable, but not value hands. So it has to be Tolokonikov. Yeah. I have no idea what Likov was thinking. So he's saying, why can't he have a pocket pair fives or higher? Right. So because because Likov has king high, so pocket fives and up through pocket kings, which are not full houses, would all beat Likov. Right. And they right. could all be betting. Yeah. But now if you call, you're beat by those two. So right. he's saying, is I think he's implying that somehow this could be turned into a bluff. Why are we talking about I don't that? know what he means by betting but not value hands. I guess that would mean That'd a bluff. bluffs. Those are bluffs. I guess that would mean a bluff. Yeah. I don't. I think those are the exact hands that Tolokonikov is not going to bet all three streets with. Yeah. Like pocket fives up through pocket kings that are not the jacks because jacks would have made a full house on the river. But first of all, jacks would not have probably bet the flop, and if they did, they wouldn't have bet the turn. Probably. Right. There's just kind of no way he's betting those hands for three streets because they're right in the middle of his range, and there's no real reason to bet them at certain points. I mean, let's pretend we have pocket kings here and we bet the flop. And for some crazy reason, we have a, we know we can bet the turn. We decide to bet the turn again. Why would we ever bet the river? What are we trying to get called by exactly? We have to put Likov on a king high hero call, I guess. Well, we could, or maybe a, a lower pocket pair, I yeah. guess, if we have kings. But pocket fives can't be putting well, him on that. We cannot reasonably expect to get value for three streets with those hands. Right. And they're also, well, at least pocket kings especially, is too good to bluff for three streets. Way too good. Yeah, so way, there way, doesn't way really too. seem, that's kind of like the middle of his range, which is why we didn't consider them. I think it's much better to turn pocket kings into a bluff catcher almost immediately. Yeah. Like on the flop, we can check it back and then just call the turn and call the river, at least sometimes call the right. river, right? We'll call at least one street easily. Key being, I just can't see a way that Tolokonikov expects to bet three streets with those hands and make it a good play almost ever. Right. Yeah. Next, we're going to talk about the hand Sammy Farha <laughs> versus, Hollywood, versus Hollywood royalty. Uh, ho Hollywood royalty, of course, is Oliver Hudson. <laughs> of course. Well, Everybody knew that's who we meant. His we parents are, you know, Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. His yeah. sister is Kate Hudson. That counts. Who else would be Hollywood royalty? No one. Nobody. No one. Jaden Smith, maybe. Just, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Anyway, check that hand out before you see these comments. Right up there, you yeah. know what to do. Come right back.
Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of comments on this. Yeah. A lot of people with in this vein of what I'm about to read. Okay. So, so I really got to get a chance to respond to this in particular. Great. Nick Domkos says, and there's going to be a response to this too. Can you guys create a scenario where Hudson does not lose all of his chips in this situation? Is there any real way for him to get away from this? And then Ryan Ribaldo says, no, he's going broke every time. So a lot of comments just like this, sort okay. of killing us for saying whatever, 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 he's always going broke. All right, we can easily, easily lay out a scenario yeah. in which Oliver Hudson does not go broke. All for right. sure. So let's go back to the turn. Bam. Oliver Hudson bets 300. Yes. Sammy Farha makes it 1300. Right. If Oliver Hudson were to call, which is what we thought was the right play, he yeah. would have about 8,000 left. 8,250. 8,250 left, and the pot would be what, 3,000? Like 3,300. 3,300, okay. Now we go to the river, let's say it's a deuce of diamonds or something. We still want to be in check call mode because Sammy Farha still has a ton of value that beats us. Yeah. We don't really expect to check raise and get value, yeah. right? Yeah. Pot's actually 3,500. Okay, 3,500. So say we check. Say Sammy Farha goes for the most value he can. He goes for 3,800. Wow. That's we a crazy big bet. We probably bet. have to call. Yeah. But we still have almost half our stack. Right. And yeah. let's say Sammy Farhad doesn't do that because he's afraid of blowing us off our hand. Rarely, especially back then, where there are these massive overbets. Yeah. Right? By a pro, anyway. Right. So let's say Sammy goes for more normal value, like 2,000, 1,800, even 2,500. We have more than half our stack right. left. This is exactly how we would play this hand. We seriously this is not would. Result, this is not because we know what Sammy had. We would, we played many hands just like this. Yeah. We don't go broke with this hand in this spot. And we think a lot of players don't, not just us. We don't think we're special in that no, way. No, we think a lot of good players would not go broke with tens full here. So we actually think if you are thinking like you have to go broke, that's something maybe to reflect on and understand that you don't have to go broke because they're so, so, so deep. Right, right they're if, very deep. If they're shorter, of course they're gonna go yes, broke. Yes, definitely. But they start the hand with 200 blinds each, right? Right, and there's no way you should lose 200 we blinds here. We illustrated it in the video on the turn. We don't really expect Semi Farha to be calling with the worst hand when we shove. I think right. the heart of a lot of these comments that are saying we have to go broke are saying we have to shove the turn. Right. I don't know why we would. We want to keep the bluffs alive. We don't want to blow King Jack off the hand, which will almost certainly fold. We don't want to blow away trip aces if Sammy Farha somehow has trip aces here, which will almost certainly fold. Right. So we're only really getting called by better hands. And then the same is true if we check raise the river. So we might as well check call the river and enter that scenario that we just said. You have to understand, yeah. this is not a cash game, right? This is the first hand of the World Series of Poker main event. People treat this very, this is very important to people. Yeah. Even Sammy Farha, even Oliver Hudson, they care about this stuff. So Sammy Farha is not just gonna blow up on the first hand, he's just not gonna do it. He doesn't have seven, eight suited here, right? right. He's not just gonna go nuts. Right. And, and if he, and does, have, way, if if he, he does, does have seven, eight suited, he's going to fold when we race. Right, instead yeah. of like, maybe we give him a chance to yeah. bet again, and he's not gonna bet huge, right. but maybe we get another 1,500 chips so out. So we give Oliver Hudson credit, he is an amateur, so yeah. we don't expect him to understand all of this, but we really do think you don't have to go broke. We absolutely don't. Yeah. Okay. Moving on, David Haynes says, great video as usual. Thank you. Thank you, David. Yeah. But one important part of the analysis is wrong. Michelle Williams has <laughs> definitely had the best post Dawson's Creek career. And you know what? That is damn true. So what are you, what is this referring to? Because we put up at one point a picture of the Dawson's Creek crew. Yeah. And there's Josh Jackson and there's James Vanderbeek. There's Katie Holmes and this other blonde woman who I didn't know who it was, although she did look a little bit familiar. And I put a little thing which said, who is this woman? <laughs> or who is this person? And it turns out it's Michelle Williams, who's the movie star of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, way to go. I mean, Katie Holmes has had a pretty good career. Jonathan edited that video, so we can blame him for that mistake. I mean, it was funny. Sorry, was, Michelle. It wasn't me, Michelle. It was, was Jonathan. It was going for the it joke. Was we know you're a listener and a watcher, Michelle. I didn't know it was you, though, in fairness. All right, <laughs> finally. Arya Afshar M, who's a frequent commenter. Oh yeah, yeah, good guy. Says, I remember in a very early poker guy's hand, there was a straight heavy paired board with one Welsh amateur against Robert Romanello. Yes. And you said Romanello can't be sure if his opponent's hand is actually good or if he's overvaluing something like Broadway. Romanello had jacks full, by the way. I remember this. Because he doesn't know better, wouldn't the same argument be applied here and make Farha not fold the hand like King Jack? I guess that is a fair point. So that's like if Oliver Hudson had ace king here and was overvaluing it, I guess. Um, I guess, yes, that's what yeah. we're talking about, right? Yeah. So there's a, there's a few differences though, really key differences. Okay, let's hear them. One is that um, this was not for all of the chips, right? Yeah. So by the way, Roman L made the fold anyway, right. which is an extraordinary fold. It was a great fold. Like I wouldn't have folded that in a million and years. And a lot of, to do with that hand had to do with physical tells, yes, by the way. That right. was a very tell heavy hand. Right. But. It was also for a guy bet like 2,000, or the guy raised the river, actually, is what he did, right? But not for that much, right? Isn't that what he did? I don't know. It was a million years I'm ago. I'm pretty sure Romanello bet because he yeah. had jacks full, and the king's full guy raised, and Romanello thought for a while and finally folded on a four-Broadway card 
yes. born, which yeah. is an ama- a fantastic fold. Absolutely. But he knew the guy well enough to know the guy isn't raising a straight there, and he believed the guy was never bluffing, and he was right. But the so, heart of the question is, are we worried as Sammy Farha that Oliver Hudson is overvaluing a hand, right. and therefore, if we have King Jack, do we have to call it Okay, off? right. And that's actually a fair question. Yeah. That really is a fair question. Um, I think we don't have to call it off with King Jack when Oliver Hudson moves in for 8,900 more or whatever. Right. Is, because or maybe, more. first of all, we have to hope that he's overvaluing a hand, which right. we can't be sure of. We don't expect him to show up with Ace Jack pretty much ever here, right? So it's just Ace King? Because he three back right. pre flop. Probably. Yeah. So it's just Ace King that we're worried about him overvaluing versus all of the hands that beat us. Yeah. We have to have that plus him overvaluing the hand. I think it's still a fold. All right, guys, the final hand of this epically long you comment, we respond. This is like, there will be blood level, you comment, we respond. That's not that long. Okay, fine. Gangs of New York? I mean, why are we picking these? Why not much longer things? Anything with Daniel Day-Lewis in it. (laughs) Good enough. All Daniel Day-Lewis movies combined. It's Phil Locke makes a sick read where Phil Locke and Johnny Chan played a cool pot in high stakes poker. Right up there. Come back here. Here's the comments. All right. First of all, Christopher Brown says, I wonder how it would have played out if Johnny had bet the flop. As played, there's really nothing in his range that 7-7 beats there. But had he bet the flop, he has almost all the aces except ace-queen and ace-seven, and maybe a lot of bare queens. Well, I don't understand this. I don't really understand that either. So you're impl- you're saying that Johnny can can bet a, an ace-queen seven flop with just a queen after Daniel opened under the gun plus one and hasn't acted yet? That seems unlikely. Yeah, it seems pretty unlikely. I don't think Johnny would do that. I think Johnny's always checking probably his entire range here because he'd expect Daniel to bet yeah. this. Right. So, but the question is, if Johnny bets the flop, okay, is right. there a way it plays out differently? So let's, let's okay. focus on that. Great. Um, I think, well, first of all, Johnny bets. Johnny bets. Locke probably just calls, but he might raise because Johnny is implying extreme strength if he donks the flop. Right. So then Johnny would just fold on the flop, I would think, if that happened. I don't know if Johnny would fold on the flop. He'd certainly yeah. fold by the turn. If yeah, he, cer- the turn he certainly would. I don't think there's... Oh, no, he can't fold the turn. He makes tough. He makes right. ace-jack on the turn. He can't he fold does, the He does. You're right. Um, I think unless Locke raises the flop and Johnny decides to fold right there and then, Locke's going to lose more. He would lose more if Johnny bet the flop, yeah. But we don't think Johnny betting the flop would have been a good play with ace-jack. No, it's not a good play. Yeah. Daniel's either going to fold or have a better hand most of the time. Yeah. So that's not good. All right. Also, 92, United Fan 92 okay. says, if you should raise the river here as a bluff sometimes, what hand should you pick? This okay. is a great question. That's, I think a lot of people ask similar questions, yeah, right? I, yeah, it's, it's a cool thing to be thinking yeah. about. Queen Jack seems like the best option, in my opinion. You block the most likely boats. King Jack and Queen Jack could work too, blocking boats and straights. If you're really sure that Locke is betting for value with King 10 or a strong ace, I guess you could raise ace rag. But that seems a little too strong to raise since you're chopping with all aces except ace king, which Locke really doesn't have all that much. This is a pretty well thought out comment. I think think it's a great comment. I think I'm going to disagree with one part. I think the best hands to raise as a bluff are the aces, actually. I understand that those are sensible calling hands here, the way the hand played out. But if we want to make like a just-in-case play, if we're raising and we're Johnny Chan and we understand our image Uh we block the most if we have an ace well not only that but we get phil off all the chops if we think he's gonna if he's gonna snap fold trip aces which apparently he is then it's a great play right the problem is a lot of times phil's bluffing or has a slightly has like a hand like king queen and we can just call we get the same amount anyway you know and we don't put ourselves in the danger of phil having a, a true monster right but the point is if we raise with just an ace we can sometimes get phil off of uh Really bad boat, I guess. I mean, I mean if you we, know you can do that, you should be raising. But and, otherwise, you should. And also be. King Ten. Yeah, but again, yeah. if you actually think Phil's going to snap fold those hands, 100% yeah. you should raise. But otherwise, for Johnny is, Chan specifically, I think he should yeah. have that as, okay. as a strategy. I think I that might be better. But I, I think Queen Jack is a good hand. That makes sense. It's the biggest boat blocker that's not a really good calling hand. Yes, exactly. King Queen is in the same yeah. boat in that same way. I like that a lot because it's got the straight blocker, which is a great point. Yeah. I really like this comment. Yeah, it's a good comment. And it is difficult to construct a raising range in this yes. exact spot. So that's yes. I guess that's kind of to the point because we're saying Johnny is unbalanced and he is going to have value so often here. It's hard not to have value so often here. But it's cool that people went out of their way to try to construct raising ranges. A lot of the comments did in that video. I mean, I really, I'm just going to say, I know it's Johnny Chan and the whole thing, but like, I just think trip aces is too strong to turn into a bluff. It probably is, but we're in a theoretical limb here. We we're are. We're trying our best. We're you know? trying, and yeah. that's fun. Sometimes. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you next week.